Avoid crowds and unnecessary travel, or just act on common sense. There's conflicting advice tonight for pregnant women on how to protect themselves against swine flu. The Royal College of Midwives said expectant mothers should avoid crowded places. But the Department of Health has just reissued existing advice to practice good hygiene. Concerns have risen since a second pregnant British woman with the virus died last week. But the National Childbirth Trust has been accused of scaremongering after it suggested women should delay getting pregnant until after the pandemic is over. Ros Upton reports. Pregnant women are more likely than others to contract swine flu because their immune systems are suppressed to ensure their bodies don't reject their baby. They're at higher risk of complications such as pneumonia too. Up to half a million women in Britain are expecting. For many of them, pregnancy is already a time of concern about their unborn child. Yet Britain's professional health organisations are giving conflicting advice on dealing with swine flu. The Department of Health has today updated its website saying it wanted to clarify guidelines for expectant mothers. But its advice is much the same as for the rest of the population and centres on personal hygiene. If you cough or sneeze, catch it in a tissue, put it quickly in a bin and wash your hands and surfaces regularly to kill the virus. I'm not relaxed, I'm not complacent, but I do think it's important that we understand that overall it is mild, that we can, by carrying out the simple hygiene measures of sneezing into a hanky, disposing of it uh, and washing our hands and staying at home if we have got swine flu, all of those things will help. The government is not advising pregnant women to avoid crowded places and unnecessary travel. This ignores repeated recommendations from the Royal College of Midwives and the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynaecologists. On July the 9th, the two colleges advised expectant mothers to avoid unnecessary travel and to avoid crowds where possible. And just two days ago, they again advised to avoid crowded places. In pregnancy, the immune system is to some extent uh, depressed, so women are slightly more likely to get infection. Obviously, if they are in an area where there are many more people, then the risk of infection being present is the, all the greater. So a suggestion that they, they try to avoid large crowds if possible, but we don't want them to, to feel that they have to be in quarantine. If someone's pregnant, if, if they can have alternative transport uh, alternatives then by all means but you know if they have to travel if that's the only means of travel then they should carry on as usual. The National Childbirth Trust, a leading charity for parents, had been passing on advice to postpone conceiving until after the pandemic had passed. We put together, pulled together all the sources of information into one place along with some evidence-based information especially for those that were expecting a baby or had a new baby and part of that included links to the Department of Health website which at the time said to delay conception if you're going through a fertility cycle. However, the Department of Health in the light of knowing that swine flu is much less uh, serious as a disease than we thought, they changed that on Friday. All this conflicting advice is causing concern among many people pregnant women. Hospitals and midwives are working with the government to gather data to determine how many pregnant women have contracted swine flu and how many have been hospitalised. Officially there have been 29 deaths involving swine flu in the UK, including two mothers who died after giving birth. In Australia, where the H1N1 virus has now killed 32 people, doctors are advising expectant mothers to steer clear of crowds. It's reported 11 pregnant women are being treated for swine flu in intensive care units there. Two have had to have emergency caesareans. They're all critically ill. The life support systems are there to do things like keep oxygen levels up when the oxygen levels drop down. Obviously, that's very important in pregnancy to keep the oxygen level up. One of the symptoms of swine flu is fever, which if left untreated could lead to miscarriage or premature labour. Doctors are advised to treat pregnant women suffering from swine flu with the drug Relenza. It's an inhaled antiviral which targets the throat and lungs, but doesn't reach significant levels in the blood or placenta. In severe cases, doctors may prescribe Tamiflu, which comes in tablet form, and so does reach the fetus. The European Medicines Agency has examined case reports of exposure to both antivirals and they show no evidence of any adverse effects on the mother nor her unborn child. Virologists developing a vaccine for swine flu told Channel 4 News it poses no risk to the developing fetus. The vaccine won't be ready until autumn, but pregnant women will be among the first to be immunised.
Well, joining me now from Westminster is Dr. Boone Lim, who's the lead expert on the flu pandemic for the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynaecologists. I'm just looking at your official advice uh, issued together with the Royal College of Midwives. It says, avoid unnecessary travel, avoid crowds where possible, ensure your children follow this advice. Do you all stand by that advice tonight, uh, even though the government isn't repeating it? Yes, good evening. I think it's important to, to understand that the that advice was part of a package of, of uh, general hygiene advice that we gave uh, on the website, which the, it is important to stress that the, the main uh, issue here is to ensure that women and, and indeed families practice good uh, hand and respiratory hygiene. Uh, and then obviously the, the advice about travel uh, was part of the whole package of advice. Yeah, but I mean it stands, doesn't it? So should a woman, for example, avoid the London Underground during the rush hour um, if no. she's pregnant? No, what we're saying is that... Uh, the, well, that's the, a crowd and it's travel. Yes, obviously, if, if, um, if a woman is worried about travelling uh, in crowded places, uh, clearly, she, in, you know, she should consider that. But we're not saying that to a general well, public. Well, she'll only be worried, I'm sorry to interrupt, she'll only be worried because of this advice. Uh, no, Does the not, advice stand or not? Yes, we're not saying that they should change their lifestyle be, based on that. I think it's important to stress that the, the general hygiene advice is more important. Uh, than, than the other considerations. Now, the, go the government is saying one thing, your college is saying another, and the National Childbirth Trust, who many people go for courses when they are pregnant and about to have a baby, are saying something altogether different. Now, which one of those is wrong? Uh, well, I don't think anybody is wrong. We work very closely with the Department of Health uh, to give advice to, to pregnant women. And the, Depar the Department of Health uh, has always, again, worked very closely with us. And the, the message is consistent. Uh, the consistent advice is about uh, personal hygiene. Well, <laughs> uh, you keep saying personal hygiene, but I'm looking at your official advice, and it says, clearly, avoid unnecessary travel, avoid crowds where possible. Yes, that, that applies to the general public. I think uh, even the non-pregnant women, if, you know, that's just a general consideration for for, um, you know, in, in a situation where there's an epidemic, uh, but not specifically to change people's lifestyles. Could you explain what are the risks to pregnant women that are heightened? Uh, a, a pregnant woman's immunity is reduced, and therefore, if she does catch uh, the flu, the swine flu, for instance, uh, there is a risk of her developing complications such as pneumonia, and that's why we advise uh, that women who do feel unwell to contact the GP or the swine flu information line to get advice. And if they, they are deemed uh, you know, suitable to be given treatment, they should take the treatment. But also, more importantly, they should try, if they have a temperature, they should control uh, their fever by taking paracetamol. We've had lots of questions sent in.